Working inside of Photoshop requires the artist to be comfortable and familiar with the layering system inside of Photoshop. I've gone ahead and created a number of layers inside of my Photoshop document, and as you can see, I am on the background layer, and I know I'm on the background layer because we've got this nice little salmon pink background highlight color, okay, and I have the visibility icon for that layer turned on. So let's talk about this whole layering system and how it works inside of Photoshop. Whenever I think about layers in Photoshop, what image comes to my mind is layers of glass, and that's really kind of what we're doing. We are painting on layers of glass transparent glass. Now each layer is going to be seemingly invisible until we throw down some pixels, until we physically paint some polygons or pixels on that layer. Now on my background layer, I've painted this lovely uh, transition from black down to white. If I turn on my red square layer, you can see that I've painted a number of red pixels in the shape of a square. Now the great thing about these different layers inside of Photoshop is that we're able to isolate and control which content goes on which layer. So in, in my situation here, I have my red square, and then I also have my background. By putting all the red pixels that form the square on their own layer, I now can control them separately from the background. For example, if I was to activate my move tool, check it out. I can move just the red square around my canvas. I don't, I'm not influencer, influencing whatsoever all the pixels that make up my background because they've been separated into different layers. So this whole layering process gives us a high degree of control. It also allows us to focus our attention on the shape or the image that, we had, that, would, that we're currently working on. For example, I have my little blue guy here, and as you can see, I've placed uh, all of the pixels that represent the blue circle on their own layer, and what we're able to get here is, again, we get control, right? We get control. We can move these separately around the screen and not worry, or, uh, not worry about influencing or messing up or deleting all of the pixels that comprise the red square layer or even the background. Now, we can move these layers around. We can change the orders of our layers of glass, if you will, right here in Photoshop. It's really, really easy. To illustrate this, let me turn on my little green triangle here. And again, if, if I move it around, let me select the layer, there we go. If I move it around the scene, you can see that I am not influencing my square or my circle. But if I go over to my layers palette over here, I can also move its placement inside the, inside the layers palette up and down. By left clicking and dragging on the thumbnail of the layer itself, I can move this layer, okay? Now, it might be a little bit difficult to see, but right below the blue circle layer is a big dark black line. This line represents the current or the new location of my green triangle layer. If I let go, you can see that all of this has now been reordered. Now, this might seem like nothing's happened, but check it out. When I select the layer and begin to move this triangle, now when I move it behind, yeah, check it out. Now it's behind, behind my blue circle. The blue circle is not deleting the pixels on the green triangle. It's merely covering them up. We have uh, pixels here, or paint, if you will, on top of our first layer of glass. And because there's pixels right here, we're not seeing through those pixels onto the green triangle below. Much like we're not seeing the pixels on the red square beneath the green triangles. So if I was to, once again, move my green triangle below my square, now it looks as though the green triangle has been almost completely eliminated from my scene, but in actuality, it's purely being covered up by the red square. If I was to go to my red square layer and turn it off, my green, tri my green tri triangle comes back. Same with the blue circle. If I turned it off, my green triangle is still in the scene in its entirety. We haven't deleted it. We haven't edited it. We've just simply covered it up. I turn on my red square and my blue circle again, you can see the layering effect that we have here. Now, I want to move my, my, little, uh, my little green triangle all the way back up to the top of my layers palette. And in doing so, what do you think is going to happen? Am I going to see the green triangle in its entirety? Or is it still going to look like this little shape right here? Well, let's find out. I want to left click and drag my layer above the blue circle. I can see that I have a black line at the top of my layers palette representing the new location of my green triangle in the palette. And when I let go, voila, 
Look at this. Now my shape is back in its entirety. I still have control over its placement in the scene. I can uh, I can continue to edit the shape. I can add an effect to just this layer, and only what uh, and and whatever's on that layer is the only thing that's going to be adjusted. For example, let me show you. Since I have the green triangle layer selected, I can go to the top of my screen where it says filter, and I'm just going to apply the good old Gaussian blur effect. Now, because the green triangle is isolated on its own layer, you can see that the Gaussian blur effect is only being applied to the contents of that layer. In our case, the green triangle. Now, for whatever reason, I'm at 96.7 pixels here, so I'll bring that down a little bit, and you can see that I'm only influencing the contents of my green triangle layer. So working inside of the layering system in Photoshop is easy. It's done entirely in this, in this palette over here, and it gives us control over all of our elements in the scene separately. Influencing one layer is not going to have an effect on the layers below or above it. Now, if we wanted to add a new layer to our scene, it's really easy. In the bottom right-hand corner of your layers palette, we have this little icon right here, which will allow us to add a new layer. Let's see, uh, now I have an empty layer on layer number two. And uh, I don't know, let's just go grab my paintbrush here and uh, I'll make it uh, a different color, maybe the lovely purple and I'll change the effect to, oh, I think just maybe a big, a big line. And now I can paint, paint away here with my purple paintbrush. Now, let's look at what's going on. Now on layer two, which are gonna be my brush, my brush strokes. Okay, there we go. Um, I've painted this kind of crazy shape in here, but it's being occluded by the blue circle and the triangle. Why? Well, that's because the blue circle and the triangle are above my brushes. If I was to move my brushes layer above everything at the very top, now you can see that its pixels are blocking out everything on the scene. Deleting layers are just as easy as creating them. Um, you know, clearly this is just a big hot mess here, so I want to delete this layer. So if I left click and drag on the uh, image thumb thumbnail, I can just drop it in the trash can down there at the bottom of the layers palette. Boop. And there we go. Now we're back to our, our square, our circle, and our triangle. So that's the basics of working with layers inside of Photoshop. Start getting used to going to your layers palette and breaking up all of your assets into different layers. I think you're really going to find that it's going to help with your workflow and give you ultimate control over your entire piece of art.